Good morning and welcome to worship at the Salvation Army Oakden this morning. Well, here we are, middle of April, the second Sunday of Easter. Time is flying while we're having fun. It was fun the other day watching the news and the, the anchor people there had were struggling to work out what day it was. It was Friday, but they, and I thought, well, if, if people in the media who are preparing to present the news of things that are happening are struggling to know uh, what the day is, how are those of us who, who are at home uh, self-isolating, um, how are we supposed to know? Well, today is definitely the second Sunday of Easter. We are rampaging through April, um, heading towards um, Anzac Day and eventually Pentecost. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. I think we have Ascension, have Ascension Sunday in there somewhere as well. Anyway, I'm going to bring to you a call to worship this morning. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous to see. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Sounds like a song, doesn't it? In fact, it is a song. Uh, it's from uh, Psalm 118, but we, we've sung. Uh, lots of those lines uh, in various um, song, Christian songs over the years. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made, you know, cornerstone, cornerstone. Uh, so much of our, our worship and celebration, you know, is drawn from the words of Scripture. We're going to sing a song now, uh, which is a celebration of the fact that God can come into our lives and change our lives at any minute when we least expect it. But I hope in this time where, where you have a lot of time on your hands, that you are making the most of being able to spend more time with God, to draw closer to him and being aware that you're never alone. Because when we draw close to him, he draws close to us. And the Holy Spirit comes in and can change us. We're going to sing the song, His Loving Touch. Well, our singing for this morning is not over yet. We have another song to sing as we move into a time of prayer. And as I've said before, uh, if, if you're a bit embarrassed to sing by yourself, if those who are with you aren't joining in, feel free just to sit back and to listen and to read the words and sing internally, just to take it in. Um, but I do, I do encourage you, if you are home, just just go for it. Uh, doesn't matter if the neighbours can hear you. I know some of you are places where the walls aren't too aren't too thick. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, let it let it rip. Um, throw yourself into it, because you know the the Lord has called us to make a joyful noise for Him. Uh, and uh, sometimes our noise might not be joyful for the people around us, but uh, it is for God. Uh, and this time of worship is for God's people. 
uh, and to to thank the Lord and praise the Lord for the things that that he is do has done for them. So don't hold back. But if you really don't want to sing, just sit back and listen and read the words. I'm sure God will minister to you just as much as if um, if you hollow this out at the top of your voice. What I'd like to invite you now to join with me and bow our heads in prayer. O oh Lord, our hearts overflow with the sounds of exaltation and victory. We will say it again and again. Jesus has triumphed. Jesus is exalted. This is your doing, O oh God, who is our strength and salvation, yours alone. And it is marvellous in our eyes. 
Behold, you have made your people to dwell in unity and have given us the blessing, life forevermore. On this day you have acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Well, now we're going to have something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to move into a children's time, a kid's corner. Now, I hope that whether you are a, a child in body or a child at heart, that you'll enjoy uh, the adventures of Gopher Wood. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. I didn't hear you there. My name is Gopher Wood, and I, as you can see, am not a gopher, but a squirrel. Yes, I'm a squirrel. My parents wanted to give me a biblical name, so they called me Gopher Wood. Well, you might be saying, how is that a biblical name? Well, it's what Noah built the ark out of. Gopher Wood. And yes, before you ask, I can't swim and I don't float. Anyway, I have a story to tell you today because I learnt something, something wonderful. And that is about forgiveness. Yes, forgiveness. Well, I was in the tree the other day and I was building my wonderful acorn model. Yes, an acorn model out of sticks. It's what us squirrels do. Anyway, my baby brother, my tiny baby brother, came galumphing along the branch and smashed right through my model, sending the sticks and leaves and bits and pieces flying everywhere. I was not very happy. Anyway, I got so mad. I stormed along the branch and I went smash, 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 smash and I screamed out. I said, I will destroy your favorite thing. And my little brother hid. My baby tiny brother hid. But I was so mad. Anyway, I bumped into my big brother Chuck. And Chuck said to me, Goofa, what are you doing? And I said, I am going to smash our baby brother's most beloved thing. And you know what Chuck said? What did he do? And I said, well, he smashed my acorn model. And he said to me, well, Goofa, when I was young, you used to destroy many of my things, but I always chose to forgive you. So you should forgive. Well, after taking my older brother's sage-like wisdom, I decided to go back to my branch and to rebuild my acorn model. So I gathered up the sticks, gathered up the little, little leaves and put the thing back together again. And I moved on. I moved on. I forgave my tiny baby brother. I learned that it is better to forgive than to hold a grudge. And if my elder brother forgave me, why should I not forgive my baby brother? After all, I am so much older than he. I am the elder brother. I am the grown-up in the room. He is, after all, five minutes younger than me. Okay, I hope that you have learnt about forgiveness today and that you too will forgive others. Just as God forgave you, you will forgive others. Okay, well I'm about to go back up to my tree now and continue on making more acorn models. And hopefully my brother will leave them alone. Good. Goodbye. The scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 9. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Well, in the early days of the Christian faith, um, persecution was something that our, our forebears came up against time and time again. But the early Christians saw uh, persecution as something that wasn't, although it was, it was a negative thing, it wasn't a great thing, but it was something that could, could bring a sharpening and could bring a, 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 a strength uh, to, the, to the new movement. It's almost like, you know, when we're under pressure, that's when uh, the diamonds are formed. And in this, this um, passage from the first uh, epistle of Peter, we, we come across a time when, when Peter's encouraging uh, young Christians to, um, when I say young Christians, they're, they're new Christians. The, the movement wasn't very old. But he was encouraging them, you know, young and old, but new Christians, uh, to stand firm in the face of, um, face of persecution. And, and to know that God was with them and that through hard times, uh, strength is formed and that there is rejoicing and there is joy even in the midst of hardship. Peter writes this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead. A new birth, born again, born from above, just like John in his gospel, who talks with Nicodemus and talks about being born again, the need to be born again or born from above. It can be translated uh, both ways. Uh, Peter is bringing up the fact um, that, that Christians um, have gone through a new birth, um, you know, a new birth into a living hope. You know, when we become Christians, um, but we're out and we are born again the whole way we see things changes we no longer see people as commodities to be used and abused by us we see people as individuals who are uh, are intrinsically deserving of love people who are deserving of an unconditional love from us not based on 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 their the way they perform or what or what value they are to us people uh, deserve to be loved in their own right, just as God loves us, um, sees us as intrinsically lovable. You know, God doesn't love us because we're good at this or that. You know, our value is not based on what we can do. Our value is based on the fact that we are, um, you know, children of God created in his image. So that when we are born again, when our, our mind is renewed um, in relation to heaven, not just in relation to this, this earthly world, you know, our attitude changes towards other people. And this is what Jesus was teaching. He was teaching, uh, you know, we need to love others the way we'd like to be loved ourselves. Do unto others. And he also taught that the way we show our love for God is the way we treat other people. But then Peter talks here about um, we're born into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, Last week, we talked a bit about Mary, Mary Magdalene, who was, um, you know, stuck at the tomb, talked about her being isolated in her grief. She's she's sitting at the tomb because the body of Jesus has vanished. You know, the hopes and dreams of the first followers of Christ um, seem to have been dashed when he was nailed to a cross and then he died and his body was pulled down and wrapped up and, and put into a dark grave. And then to add insult to injury, the body vanished. They couldn't even grieve over the body of the one that they had loved. 
because it was now gone. Um, the hopes and dreams seemed to have been dead and buried in the tomb with the body of Christ. But when Christ rose from the dead, those hopes and dreams, they sprung back to life in a way that nobody could foresee happening. In a way that was now affecting these young Christians who Peter is writing to, talking about this new, the, the new, the you know, born again into a living hope. You know, this was the faith of these young Christians wasn't in the following of, of this man, Jesus of Nazareth. Their faith was in the resurrected Christ. You know, this was something that before the, the, the first Easter, the disciples never could have truly imagined. A living hope based on resurrection from the dead. We follow Christ. Those of us who have been born in, again into this living hope, we follow Christ. And we are part of an eternal community. We follow a living hope. The hope we have is, is one that we've inherited that has always been alive. It has always been alive in our hearts. But Peter is saying, look, you know, you, you, you are so blessed. You are so blessed because you were born into this living hope. Unlike us who had to face the death and the sadness. Only to be rewarded with the beautiful resurrection, with life that came on that first Easter morning. There is a hope that was lost. That became fulfilled and was now a hope embraced by many. Dreams that seem to die but that are risen again are, are fascinating to look at when we, we study other people. I wonder if you're familiar with um, the phenomena of the shags. Possibly aren't. I've only become acquainted with with this um, amazing uh, music group in the last couple of years, um, the Shags, uh, they were a dream that seemed to have died, but remarkably rose again. Here's a glimpse of the Shags. And the skinny people want what the fat people's got. And the fat people want what the skinny people's got. The story of the shags is a remarkable one. It's it's about a you know a dream that has that seemed to die, but but then didn't. Um, it begins with a as a, a, a particular woman who had this. Um, she had a premonition that her her son would marry a strawberry blonde woman, and that he would have daughters, three daughters, and that they would go on to form a popular music group. Anyway, this guy uh, took this to heart, and strangely, he ended up marrying a strawberry blonde woman. It's amazing how sometimes prophecies have a way of self-fulfilling themselves. You know, when you know what the criteria of a prophecy is, sometimes you will uh, you will pursue that to make sure it happens. Marries a strawberry blonde woman, and uh, they have daughters. They have three daughters, and uh, she she dies and has these daughters. Anyway. The last part of the prophecy that needed to be fulfilled was that they would become a popular music group. But by now, this guy had so much faith in the fulfillment of this prophecy that he went out and he bought musical instruments for, for his daughters from, you know, cheap shops and things. So they had all these instruments. They um, he pulled them out of school and started homeschooling them and started giving them music lessons so that they would become this popular music group. Um, he booked a regular gig at the local town hall on a Friday night, so they would have to front up and play. Now, these girls are not what we call conventionally talented, as you probably heard from that clip. Not conventionally talented. In fact, for those of us who, are, who have some sort of proficiency in music, um, we've got no idea. But this didn't stop um, this dad. He put them on, and and they they were they were able to create their own kind of music that seems to be un um, unaffected by by rhyme or meter or uh, the drums, and never seemed to be uh, playing any relation to uh, what the, the the front the guitarists are playing. Um, the lyrics kind of are out there. There's, it's it just doesn't adhere to any of the things that that um, regular music does. Anyway, this the father decided that 
you know, for them to be a popular group, they didn't just have, didn't need to just perform. They needed to record. So he booked recording time, and he took these girls in to this recording studio. And despite the fact that the producer kept saying, "I don't think these girls are ready to to do what you think they're going to do," the dad just said, "No, they are. They're they're going to be a popular music group." And um, the guy, I think, running the studio said, "Look, the guy's paying. Just let him record. Let them record." And so they did. And I think there are a thousand um, pressings of the the Shags uh, Philosophy of the World album. Um, they, were, they were pressed. And I think a hundred, the dad ended up with a hundred and uh, the recording guy just took his money and ran with about 900 of them. Just knew that he was going to be left with, with these. So he just grabbed the money and went. And uh, anyway, that's where it, most people would think it would end, you know, um, a dad with a pile of records by a band that could never, um, never really, um, you know, make any headway in any kind of music scene. Seems like the last part of the prophecy wasn't going to happen. But in the early 70s, Frank Zappa, who's a famous uh, rock guitarist and musician, uh, he was on the radio one day on a show called Dr. Dementos. And he was saying, look, oh, you should hear this bag, the shags. They're amazing. They're better than the Beatles. And he was, he'd come across the record somewhere, you know, and um, all of a sudden they sort of entered into popular consciousness. And from there, their infamy grew and they gathered fans who listened to this music and who would go, this is like nothing we've ever heard. Like this music doesn't adhere to any rules that we have. And people were beginning to see a sort of quirky beauty in what these girls had done, these young girls had done. And it rolled on. And in the early 80s, more music by the Shags was released. Other stuff that had been recorded but never released was 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 out there. It was released on to, to CD. And uh, in recent years, um, you know, after many uh, punk musicians and, and, you know, musicians who represent schools of music that aren't conventional have sort of lifted this up as a, a unique piece of, of um, a unique art, um, artifact of, of music that doesn't obey the rules. Um, there have been other musicians, that are, serious musicians that have come alongside um, some of these girls, the, you know, the, who are now women, older women, and uh, have been working with them and they've been touring and they've had to been writing out write, writing out the, the songs uh, to the point where the shags have become a phenomena, a cultural phenomena and musical phenomena. Uh, and it still goes on. Dot Wiggins, the, you know, one of the, 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 the guitarist girls, has a, has a band now and, and they write, you know, write music, similar sort of quirky stuff, a bit more conventional now. But there's still a dose of that, that innocence and exuberance uh, in her music. So... The fulfillment came, you know, the, this, the prophecy seemed to be dead. The, the dream seemed to have died, but it didn't. It rose. It came back in a way that no one ever expected. And Jesus did this too. This, the hope, the hope that the first disciples had in Christ died. And was left in a tomb, but it was reborn. It came back to life. The fans, the, the flames were fanned by the resurrection of Jesus, and to the point where Peter now could be writing to a new generation of Christians, telling them about this wonderful hope that they had been born into through choosing to follow Christ. A living hope and that this was an amazing thing that that they could never have foreseen in those lonely dark days following the events of Calvary and Peter goes on I'm going to read to you the next part of this this passage verse 4 to 5 and into an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled and unfading kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for our salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Okay, we have this hope, a new hope, through the resurrection of, of Christ. And we have faith in this. And because of that, we have this inheritance. We have a future. We have, have hope of things that will be waiting for us, even when this world begins to crumble. There is more in store for us because we have bought into something bigger. We've become a part of God's kingdom. 
which is unfailing, which is imperishable, which will not be destroyed. When the things of this world are found wanting and begin to crumble and fall apart, the things that we've invested in will not be the same. They will still be there. In fact, there will be a time when they'll be unveiled. There is still more to come. The best has not been seen yet. The best is saved for later. We might be eating our main course at the moment as part of God's kingdom, but there's dessert coming that is worth the wait for. A testing time. We're living through a testing time currently, aren't we? Um, nothing seems to be normal about the days that we are living in. Peter says this, in this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Testing time. Peter's writing to these, these Christians and um, they are going through some kind of persecution. Now, uh, traditionally, we've always talked about, you know, the Christians throwing the, the Romans, throwing the Christians, the lions. Um, <clears throat> but the truth is that um, persecution of Christians didn't happen right through um, the Roman Empire all the time. Uh, it seems to be that there were, there were persecutions that broke out in local areas at different times. Sometimes it was it was more across the board than others, but it wasn't all the time. Uh, we know Nero, when Rome burnt, uh, he persecuted the Christians, uh, blamed them for, for starting the fire. Um, we also know that there are often persecutions against uh, Christians from other Jews. There was a time when um, the Christian church was still very much a part of, of um, Judaism, of the, of the Jewish religion. And the reason why we, we became something separate was because increasingly the people following Jesus weren't Jewish uh, and they didn't practice uh, Jewish culture. Um, Jesus became a part uh, from that. Um, so eventually we, we, we separated from you know, the church and the synagogue separated. But there were many Christians who were Jewish um, and saw themselves as Jews, Jews who followed Christ. <coughs> but there was persecution because other other parts of the Jewish faith saw them as being, um, you know, heretical, believing in stuff that that they didn't believe was was right. Following Jesus wasn't something that they they saw as being God's will. Uh, so that that brought itself um, antagonism and and persecution. Uh, we know about Paul. Paul was involved in stoning of of Christians before he became a Christian himself. You know, persecution. Uh, sometimes Romans, the Romans, um, non non Christian Romans, uh, considered Christians to be atheists because they didn't believe in the gods. You know, you don't believe in all the gods. You don't believe the emperor is a god. Um, you know, you're an atheist. You follow some carpenter from Nazareth. You know, what kind of what kind of religion have you got? So that that brought dis, distrust amongst people, um, and so so often there were stories told about about Christians that they were cannibals because they ate flesh and and drank blood at at their um, their meals when they met together. You know, the rumours and sometimes are the kinds of things that that we might say about other groups that are different than us. You know, have you heard about that particular group? They do this. Have you heard about that? Well, the same things were said about us. In the early days, and and sometimes I said about us now by by groups, we've got to be very careful about gossip. Um, sometimes the best way to find out about what another group believes or does is by actually asking them and not listening to the stories that get told to you, and somehow believing they're more truthful than what the people themselves will tell you. But these people were being persecuted; they were being tested, and the idea was just like you know when you heat up metal. Um, the impurities burn out and you end up with a pure metal, you end up with pure gold once it's been, you know, um, tested by fire. You know, the impurities burn away. It's saying the same with us. So when we are under pressure, when our faith is being tested, um, what should result is a more pure faith than we um, than we, we've had before because it has been refined through fire. Refined through fire. 
That is what Peter is, is, is saying. You need to rejoice. Rejoice because your faith is getting stronger and more pure. And we're in a time of testing at the moment. Nothing we're living through is normal at the moment. The fact you can't even go to shop and buy toilet paper um, is just, just does my head in. But that is the new normal currently. We are being tested. And, and we, we ha are living in so much uncertainty. Um, when, when are restrictions going to be lifted? When are things going to get back to normal? We are being tested. But when the unknown comes, we need to turn to our firm foundation, which is Jesus, our faith in the one who has risen from the dead, the one whom we put our, fo our hope in. We need to keep on loving our neighbours as we love ourselves. We need to keep on loving God and, and showing that love for God through the way we treat others. We need to keep on being his faithful people in these days and knowing that whatever happens, Whatever comes our way, it's going to be okay because we have Christ with us and we have an inheritance that is, is indestructible. Peter goes on in verse 8, Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. See, Peter is an eyewitness talking to those who follow Christ, who never saw him with their own eyes. You see, all they have is his witness and the witness of those like him. They had no New Testament sitting by their bedside table like, like we do. We, we've got multiple copies of the Bible around here, different translations. And, you, you know, you may have more than one copy yourself. These people didn't have this. That wasn't something. I mean, uh, the fact that, that Peter is writing to them this letter means that the, you know, the New, New Testament was getting written um, in, their, you know, in their time. Christians were, were um, putting things down on paper. Because the eyewitnesses were dying. Those that had seen Christ, like Peter, they were being martyred. They were getting old and dying. Um, you know, th their time was running out. And so the opportunity for them to stand in a group and say, I saw this happen, um, was, was coming to an end. And then you sort of had the next generation of people. I talked to so-and-so who saw this happen. You know, <clears throat> so people started to, to write the things down. Before the stories about Jesus, before the eyewitness accounts would get lost, before the things he taught would disappear into time. But here Peter is still alive and he's still able to pass on his experiences to those who've come to know Christ without ever seeing him. First Peter chapter 1 verses 22 to 23 says this, Now that you have purified your souls, by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. You see, we follow the one whose teachings have been confirmed through his death and resurrection. Teachings about love. And, and we find joy in a way that defies the gates of the grave. It's a joy that's been tested through our current hardships, whether they be in the past, the present, or the future. Even in our, our times of difficulty through this pandemic, our faith is being tested. And we need to rejoice, even in the face of uncertainties. Because our, our faith is in one who has come back from the dead. Where our faith is in a truth that the grave cannot destroy. And we need to have faith that our faith will be even stronger when this thing has come and gone. So we need to keep on rejoicing. We need to keep holding our head high. No matter how much things are trying to get us down, we must not give in. Because Christ is with us both in the past, in the present and in the future.
If you are struggling, look back to a time when God has got you through something and say, Lord, you did it for me then, you'll do it for me now. If that isn't the case, I'm calling you now to put your trust in him at the present time. So God, I know you will get me through this. I will not let this get me down. Worrying is not going to add another hour to my life, but rejoicing and celebrating and having faith and trust in the one who has defeated the grave will bring me joy, will bring me hope. I pray that you have a good week and that um, the current situation doesn't get you down, that you continue to hold your head high and have faith in the one who gave his life for us so that we could come back and be a part of the Father's family. And the benediction. As we go our separate ways, may we go loving the Lord God with all our heart, mind, soul and strength and loving our neighbour as we love ourselves because in so doing we fulfil the whole of the law and the prophets. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you.